Hey, yeah, let's check out what is B4 Artists. Um, we are here on the B4 Artists website. And what is B4 Artists? Uh, B4 Artists. I thought first it was Blender for Artists, but it is like B4 Artists. Um, so B4 Artists is a fork of the, um, the Blender software. We know that. Uh, developed by some 3D enthusiasts to make Blender even better. And I'm curious to the primary goal, and you can, you can read that here. The primary goal of B for Artist Fork is to deliver refined graphical UI and a better usability. Um, a switch in the usage philosophy away from the hotkey-centered user usage towards a user-friendly and, and intuitive UI. All right, and um, uh, this is uh, interesting. Um, it's fully compatible with the Blender files and add-ons and have free feature that works. And, and every release is up to date with the newest Blender version. That's pretty cool. Uh, tool set is the same and it says here, where we differ the most is the UI and the handling. Ah, let's move forward. So um, if you want to download it, you click on this button, get B4 Artists Now. I choose for the zip file, a zip file, um, because yeah, then I have a full control about the installation, etc. So uh, because I have several Blender versions, as you see here, I got lo loads of them. Uh, so I did that. I did that already. I I must say I played with B4 Artist um, a few uh, hours ago, and I uh, I'm doing redo the video because I discovered things. I hear a helicopter at the background. I'm curious if you hear that. All right. So I downloaded um, B4 Artist and. Uh, yeah, you see, when you download it, you get this folder. You, when you extract it, you get that folder there, and you click on this folder, and you see B for Artists, the executable file. So I click on that. I removed the up data, so I think, yeah, I got the quick setup. So uh, you will see this the first time. Um, the uh, language, English, shortcuts, that's interesting. So, B4 Artists come with his uh, own set of shortcuts. So, I think if you are a beginner, you might want to use these uh, shortcuts, B4 Artists. But if you already um, use Blender for uh, three, five, seven years, uh, you might want to choose the yeah one of uh, the other ones like the um, um, probably Blender, and you can choose a theme over here. Let me check if that is working already. Oh yeah, I just can uh, check these um, themes. I like the B for Artist one. I like all the colors etc. So. Um, let's try the shortcuts uh, on B4 Artist, but then if you do that, you need some, um, you, ne you need uh, the documentation most probably uh, over here. So if you go here, here is the b4artist.de website. So that's the website. If you go to support and then you go to reference manual over here. And if you scroll down, scroll down completely, you got two files. You get the standard key map, uh, key map uh, and the important hotkeys. So that's that. Uh, let's go back to uh, Viva Artists. You can also see the shortcuts over here. So yeah, you click on the, um, on the what is that, a T panel. The tool, <laughs> I've got one of this, but I call it. Wait, yeah, I call it the end panel. End, end panel. 
Um, to open it and close it, you press Ctrl T. And if you press T without control, you uh, open and close the T panel. All right, so Ctrl T for the M panel. All right, uh, if you want to see important hotkeys, you can view them in the viewport for a while until you get used to it. All right, so my uh, first impression, I will um, show you what I, what I like very much about B4 Artists, is um, this toolbar over here, and you can adjust it. Um, so uh, you see uh, these uh, colors, so uh, I think this is uh, at uh, mesh, and it's pretty handy. Um, and then the hotkeys, uh, this W, as W that is to, to grab, and if you hold control, you can snap to a grid. I click on the right mouse button to rotate around the object. And if I press, so yeah, this is the W for the, and the key next to W is, the E for rotation. I can also click on um, press control, I mean, and then I can snap on the grease and the R. And with that, we can scale and um, yeah, snapping on scaling has not much use, I think. I press uh, five and on seven. All right, yeah, so it makes sense. All right, um, let me see. Oh, what's the shortcut for that? Shortcut D. D, all right. So, um, that's that. Uh, let's take a look more at this uh, toolbar. I think I can adjust the toolbar over here, all right? So you see, I got meshes over there, then I got uh, font, uh, armature thing, camera, sound, uh, and you can adjust that here. So this is order. You got lights here in yellow, then uh, volume in orange, meta ball, those uh, circles, surface, all right, with the blue dots, and curves also with um, not um, like per violet um, color, empties, also an orange image. I want image, um, maybe I want light probes. And there are the light probes, force field. No, I don't use that that much. But you can always go back, uh, press this one, and adjust this uh, thing. I find that uh, pretty handy. I think I'm going to hide this text over here. So, yeah, I played a little bit, and um, yeah, this is really lovely. Um, to bar. Yeah, you can adjust your um, toolbar over here. Then there is one thing. You see that um, you cannot switch to another editor type. So, but I found out if you right click on it, and it is hidden by default, it says hide editor type menu. If you unhide that, then you can switch to another uh, editor type, like that. Oh, and this is pretty nice, so I'll show you that uh, in a minute. Here on the right side, uh, we see in the properties panel, um, new icons, but they are quite uh, funny and handy. For example, you see this camera, and that makes sense that it is a rendering. While well, you see here a printer, and that's for the format, the output, etc. So that makes uh, quite some sense for me. And then 
you got a view layer that reminds me a little bit of uh, Photoshop with um, those uh, layers and those passes. Then um, a scene properties, yeah, that's a uh, sun and, uh, and this must be the world. That's all clear. And this is new collections. I'm not so familiar with that. I missed uh, Blender for a few months because I'm working on a new project uh, related to a sound and Blender. I had to do uh, a lot of research for that. And then we go to another kind of section. So this section is more for uh, Blender uh, settings and these settings here are more for the objects you see in the scene. So this is then uh, called the object properties, the properties of the object, not the mesh. That might be confusing uh, for beginners. Um, maybe I come back to the, that later, but that's not really related to B for art. So I think I skip that part. So. Mm, and these are the modifiers, that's clear. And uh, also if I click here, this is also pretty handy. So you got um, uh, well, there is more structure because the here color used. Um, these colors are not related to the function, but um, it's easier to find it back. So for example, if I want to subdivision surface. Then I know uh, later, oh yeah, there's that uh, orange um, a section in the middle, something like that. So the colors are not, as far as I know, not related to uh, function, but it is just handier to find them back. All right. Uh, particles, uh, it's obvious for me that these are particles. Um, that's that. Um, how do you call this again? This is um, forces. How do you call that? Oh yeah, physics property. All right, yeah, physics property. Constraints, uh, mesh data, and officially is called object data properties. So here you got object properties, and here it is object data properties, and that's related to uh, what you see in at that moment. Then we got, uh, what's this again? The, oh yeah, all right, material properties, right? Uh, material, and these are textures. Let's give this a base color like that. And over here, um, how do you call this bar? Um, the menu bar, I think. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure how you call it. I thought this is called the menu bar or the top bar, maybe. Anyways, so uh, this section over here, those um, balls or globes, those are the viewport uh, shading uh, buttons. So you got wireframe, you got solid mode. Uh, I think this is a text, uh, oh yeah, material preview, I think. Yeah, material preview. And here you got uh, render preview. So we are now actually in uh, Eevee. We are using Eevee, uh, and there must be a light by default, indeed. But um, why I don't see that? Ah, all right. <laughs> so I can turn on that light and select it. Let's go to light over here. Thousand watt, that's a good standard. I thought Blender's standard is pretty low. Thousand watt is a good idea. I think B4 Artists did this. I think so. Um, all right. So next, I want to show the. All right, let's set up a simple scene, but then for EV. Normally, I would do that with um, EV production suite, but um, not uh, this time. So what I do is I want to move this up um, a 
a little bit. So what was the shortcut? This one, W. I press control and I move that up. I also want to add uh, plane and I want to scale it. So I press R and then I want to scale it, I think over here, right? Then I want to give this a, a material like mid gray. I like playing around with mid gray. A mid gray is 0 0.81. Um, wait, I press shift, maybe that helps. Uh, so, uh, sorry, 0 0.18. Yeah, something like that. A little bit off, but. Um, and I press D to go back to this, um, what is it, tweak mode. All right, I press middle mouse button to a pen like that in the scene. Middle mouse button and this is right mouse button. Uh, if I, I can, with left click, I can select an object like that. And if I use right click, I can rotate around that object. So if I left click here, then I rotate around um, the light now. You see, this is pretty handy. Uh, look at how it rotates. I right click now, do this. So that's the plane. I rotate around the plane. Now I rotate around the light. So that's uh, very nice. And then middle mouse button to pen like that. Um, so this is Eevee. Um, I want to make this a little bit more shiny in this case. Oh, then, specular roughness. Oh yeah, no, we, we don't see it well because there's not much in the scene we see. So, um, All right, uh, to place the 3D cursor, you use Alt and then right click. Mm. Oh, right. Okay. I press W with Control, and now I want to a scale like that, like this, and give this also a plausible color. This is too bright, this is too bright, uh, because this one, that, and this is white on snow, snow is like, um, I don't know, something like 80% white. So you get, this is actually very bright, we don't see it here as bright because we didn't adjust the light, etc. But I suggest to start with um, materials that are kind of uh, plausible. Uh, let's do it then. So I place it here because I want to see some reflections like that. Ah, uh, all right. And then make it also a bit more. Let's check that one. So let's add some more light into the scene. I click on the globe. Okay. Click on. Mm, wait, we are working in Eevee. Um, then environment light is not really a good idea because environment light doesn't cast uh, shadows. So I don't want to do it. I turn it off. Instead, I add some more uh, lights. Um, I'm not sure how I can duplicate this at the moment. Uh, I try Shift D. Yeah, it works. Great. Um, wait, I have to note something because I want to tell you something about um, the library. There's a library. I make a note here. So I want to tell about uh, compositing and about uh, the library that comes with um, Beef Artist. All right, I think that's okay for now.
Yeah. All right, let's just quick test. Mm, let's also do this. The Let's make this uh, green, greenish. Oh, wait, we need a new material. So I click on these two, that one, that one. Done. And I'm gonna add some more lights over here. Let's move that. Uh, duplicate, oh, that works nice, yeah. So, because we are working with Eevee, I want to add some probes for reflection. So this is reflection cube, I want to use that. And uh, place this one. Around here. Oops. And an irradiance skill map as well. Let's go to front view, and we want to move it like that. I think we are going over here like that. And then scale it. Mm. And then, yeah, that's very roughly set up. Um, so, and then and you go to the properties panel, there's the render tab, and there is you know, indirect lighting, and then you can click big indirect lighting. All right, then I'm going to add a camera. Um, so there must be a camera over here, let's enable that. And I think if I go to camera, align view, um, uh, align view, no, align view, align, no. Center of you. All right, we do it different. So let's press the dot, dot. And if I go to view, I see a view. All right, so I can move around like that. Because I have your camera to view, so I can actually I'm moving the camera right now. So let's find a place where I can see. All right, I cannot find a very good place. And I click this off, all right. And let me open a second. A 
second um, free view so control t to hide that and the t to hide that panel let's move over here something like that now i want to see the camera and i want to move it on the local axis local axis so i go to local over here now i can move the camera like that So, um, let me see, let's render this out. Uh, render image. Oh, that's not yet that good. Um, let's change the camera, like uh, the millimeters, like that. All right. All right, not so interesting in a scene, but that's uh, just for the sake of uh, demonstration. And then uh, let me open here the compositor. What I like here about the compositor is that uh, those dots. So, we, um, and if you hold control, you can snap to those um, to those points. That's uh, pretty handy. Mm, I wish there was uh, something like uh, an origin as well. Um, it's pretty noisy outside, it seems, but I'm not sure if you hear that in the microphone. So we got uh, that. Um, all right, let's take a look at the outliner. Uh, what I like here in the outliner is I can see immediately what I've selected. I see here a clear, um, it's very uh, clear that I selected this cube over here. I believe in um, the standard Blender version, a uh, fork, no, it's <laughs> a Blender. That's not a fork then, but that's Blender. Um, I see a kind of a faint uh, thing and I, I always have to look like, oh, uh, Where's my, what, what's the selected? And here I, I can see it immediately. All right, that's that. Um, what I also want to show is the library. And that's nice. So, but I enable it first. So I go to edit, uh, edit and then preferences with another edit. Add it, yeah, and preferences. Then I got add ons. Let me make this a bit bigger. So, um, by default, I enable a few um, add ons. That's nice, for example. Uh, and yeah, this one is nice. Curve extra objects. Uh, maybe and landscape if you want to make a landscape then extra object so this one is curve extra object um, uh, let me show you so if you now um, add and you go to curve you see a lot of more um, options here like these uh, ones like a polygon sector curve profiles etc and that's this one and then the mesh extra mesh extra are these things i think like rock generator and math function pipe joints extras and those uh, things then animal uh, i like that uh, um, add-on so you can animate a little bit more like vertex colors etc um, then Turn around camera, camera rigs, and uh, development. Yeah, I maybe this one and that one if you um, are a developer. And uh, this one probably too. Um, yeah, import palettes, why not? And images as planes, mm, you will want that. Um, 
Support Things um, Collection Manager. Ja, modifier tools, that's uh, handy. And you can find that over here. So when you add a modifier like that, subdivision surface, and then you see those four buttons apply all the modifiers. Uh, that's a uh, handier than. Uh, the need to click on this. By the way, this is also different in B for artists. In default Blender, you have to uh, click on the drop down and then you <laughs> have to click apply. So that's a lot of work. And I love this uh, button. That's the first time I see that uh, here. The dynamic sky. Mm, yeah, actually, I, I think it's quite nice. But uh, yeah, we are working in Eevee. Uh, some position tree lightning. There's no need because I'm going to show you the library. Then, yeah, mesh F2. M mesh F2 uh, add on. You all want that for editing. Loop tools. Oh, you really have to uh, check that out and tissue. Very interesting. Um, no. No triangular. Yeah. I don't use that much, but everyone is very enthusiastic about no triangular. I was uh, too lazy to try it out. Um, yeah, and actually, the no triangular is exactly for that. That's for if you are lazy. All right. Um, bold tool. Uh, yeah, I. Like bull tool, um, if I don't have any other add-on to make a bulls. Uh, real snow is actually good, but yeah, when are you going to make uh, snow? You don't do that every day. So, I, oh yeah, yeah, this paint, B for artists, uh, brush panel. Uh, let me check, maybe you can take a look. Um, brush panel. If we have time for that, a paint palette, yeah, auto tile size, I enable it. Then, yeah, UI animation render, so it can, I think, uh, animate uh, the, the, the things here. So, mm, let me see. So, render animations of the Blender UI. All right, uh, rectify if you're into rigging, power sequencer, I could do that. Uh, demo mode. Yeah, magic QV. I miss the library. There must be somewhere. The library. Maybe we can search for it. Search. Ah, yeah, this one. Import, export, B for artist, default as a library. So if you do that, all right, and I'm going to, yeah, you see, by default is auto save preferences. I don't like that because sometimes I just want to check I want to have full control by myself. So what I do is I disable this, and if I want to save preferences, I save preferences. So that's what I like. And then uh, let's take a look at the library that comes with only B for artists. And the library must be somewhere here as a browser. And I think. No, it's not the user library, default library. All right. Um, let's, all right, let's change this. I delete that. So I think we can do this. Wow, that's pretty cool. I think we have to wait for the compilation. Yeah. That's super cool.
Ja, um, yeah, yeah. coated glassy, that's what we want. Huh? Coated glassy and Uh, let's change that into into that one. I go to the run tab and then big and the right lighting. Yeah, we don't see much at the moment. Um, all right. Yeah. So that's uh, pretty cool. This one. Oh. Basic class, that's nice. So let's try that one. What? Oh, yeah. And I think it's already working because um, glass that needs uh, specific settings, like here, alpha blend, alpha hashed, and then you need to go to the render tab, and I think. You need to enable screen space reflections. And maybe you have to bake again. I'm not sure about that. So bake in the right lighting. All right, um, I press the dot on the number keypad. Let's move around a little bit. So go on to the 3D viewport. I want to rotate. Oh, right. Now let's do it different. So I press Ctrl T. And then I go to View. And then Camera to View. No. Ah, and now I can move around like that. Hmm. All right, let's try that out. So uh, render it out, render image. All right, so we see those uh, reflections over here. We see the glass. So yes, um, we see all those um, colors, that's pretty handy, and I love these um, small icons, and also over here. Um, again, so if you want to stick with the, the shortcuts uh, you are used um, of, then you can, um, if you load the screen, the, fir the, the, the first uh, screen, you can select uh, Blender and then you have your standard uh, shortcuts. So I cannot cover all of this, um, of uh, Blender of course, because Blender is so big. But I like um, the icons here, they are very clear and it's easy to navigate and to understand. Um, yeah, within a few hours I can. Um, just very uh, pretty fast. So um, yeah, let me show also the website. So yeah, this is b4artist.de. If you go there, and this is the website, you can get b for artist over here. And if you look for the documentation, um, you go over there and if you scroll down, you see here uh, all the key maps. All right, I think that's uh, pretty much it. So I will put the links and the description of the video. And then um, see you in the next video. All right.